a good afternoon from Bush Gardens Williamsburg. This park we absolutely love. And we got a couple of days here. Yes. We're gonna check out Pantheon. Really excited for that. Uh, Food and Wine Festival is going on. Excited for that. I'm excited for that. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I love this park. It's so pretty. Oh yeah, and lots of fun rides. So uh, in this video, we're just gonna take you along for our day, maybe day and a half. I'm not sure how long we'll be here, but uh, let's go check out the rides. We got to the park about an hour after official park opening. So we're not gonna head to Pantheon first because I feel like that's where everyone else is gonna be. Yeah. So we're gonna head towards the Ireland and France side of the park, but had to stop and see the sheep. <laughs> first ride of the day is gonna be one I have never done here at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, and that is Finnegan's Flyer, the big SNS Scream and Swing. And there's a turtle in the lagoon. So Vinigan's Flyer is not the most forceful of these uh, big swing rides that I've ever done, but the location is fantastic. Yeah, we saw turtles. Yes, uh, soar like 100 feet over some turtles and a ravine. That was that was pretty cool. Definitely try and get on the side, uh, the side that's facing this way. Up next, made it to the France section of the park and getting ready to drop 200 feet straight down on Griffin. So we only waited about 10 to 15 minutes for Griffin, but they were only running one train, so it was kind of a slow go. Proceeding to the next available The park's only wooden coaster, Invader, is up next, and really like the entrance over here. Yeah, I love the theme. And not too bad of a line for Invader, just gotta go up those stairs and get on. Up next is Alpengeist, the big, gigantic, inverted roller coaster as we make our way into the German section of the park. side of the former Curse of Dark Castle Dark Ride. Um, rumored next year to be home to a new indoor roller coaster at the park. Uh, not the most interesting layout, but definitely the park needs more indoor rides. Like, we're supposed to be here tomorrow, and it looks like all day thunderstorms, which means none of the rides will run. Oh. But if they had indoor rides, or never got rid of their indoor rides, like Curse of Dark Castle was great. Curse of Dark Castle is probably gonna be way better than the roller coaster they build in here. And it's a nicely themed building, too. Yeah, at least that's staying. And unfortunately, the wonderfully named Bar Castle Spirits is closed. That, that That's top notch on the name there, Bush Gardens. Good for you. Gotta say, this is a weird placement for an ATM. Uh, pretty much shares a area with the queue for the little kid's plane ride. It is, it is. Ever since Verbolton opened, it has been my favorite ride here at Bush Gardens. Now, Pantheon, we're gonna ride soon. I'm wondering if that is going to stay the same. But anyway, I'm still excited to ride for Bolton. The front row queue was not bad here for Bolton, so we're waiting in line for the front. And I love some of these uh, kind of Easter egg stickers that they've got on this cabinet. Uh, lots of good stuff, uh, including a reference to the, the designer of the ride, Zaire. I'm so excited.
for Bolton, I thought it was running really well. Uh, the effects in the event building, I think they were in pretty good shape. We got the lightning storm version. I uh, would like to see them. Uh, really cool first drop. Do you think Bush Gardens needs to repair that there? That's doesn't look so great, but we're uh, getting ready to make our way over towards Pantheon. Uh, very excited for this one. Should be cool. I think there might be a train coming. Uh, Maybe. I really like Pearl I don't know if Pantheon will uh, be overwhelming for me. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, the Velocicoaster is so good. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think it's swing launching now. I'm stalling for time. <laughs> uh, they are running the boat ride on the Rhine River again. Which I is... don't think I've ever been on that. I, I'm pretty sure. I could not tell you the last time that I went on that. Oh, here's, here comes Here we go. Oh, you probably get really good views of uh, Pantheon and Verbolden from the, the boat ride. There it goes. Look at that outer bank. Having fun. Currently in the very pretty Da Vinci's garden section of the park. And I feel like unless you knew the Da Vinci's cradle used to be over here, you wouldn't really notice. Like sometimes when parks get rid of rides, it's very, very clear. This one, not so much. I had no idea until you said that. We happen to be at Busch Gardens on a pretty unbusy day. I mean, this is the extent of the line for Pantheon at about 3.13 in the afternoon. So it does not look bad at all. Might even be less than that, 23 minutes. So I don't quite understand the point of this TV in the queue. All it does is stays on this one image and then the logo of Pantheon just fades in and out. The train doesn't move. No, it's, it's weird. Just got off of Pantheon and I loved it. I thought it was great. I was going and expecting this to be my favorite roller coaster at the park. It is absolutely the best roller coaster at the park, in my opinion. Um, some of the key moments, I love the top hat. The view you get up top as you dive down nice. towards the river, that is really awesome. Uh, in between the launches, there's like an airtime hill. Yeah, like so during the swing funny. launch, yeah, yeah. You, you get, get some a lot of airtime. Uh, the views from the spike are really cool. Uh, the, I like the, the inverted stall. Very, very smooth ride. And I definitely think this is a winner for Bush Gardens. It is. I, I think it's a very good fit. I personally uh, like Bull Bolton better. I like the theming. I like the views there. I mean, this is there's no theme so, on this oh, at no, all. No. But uh, it, it, it's... Is the coaster good? Yes. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's very good. Uh, the, uh, based on similar rides, I would say it's not better than things like uh, Terran or Velocicoaster. But it is really good. That funny thing. Yeah. That's why it's very unique having like so many small launches. Time to go from one forwards backwards multi-launch roller coaster to another forwards backwards multi-launch roller coaster. Which is an interesting uh, placement. Yeah, they're being right next to each other in the park. <laughs> We're going to make our way over towards Apollo's Chariot next day. Kind of a modern classic here at Busch Gardens. has a big door gotta check out some of the merchandise for pantheon that's a very me shirt that one might be coming home uh, i guess they did not sell too many of these opening day t-shirts or everyone that came for opening day was not a small it could be one or the other you've got a long sleeve with the, all the logos of the coasters down the side i really like the coffee mug that's really nice with the yellow 
it seems like something drew the intern absolutely by. And then you've got pennants, coaster cutouts. Um, that's pretty fancy. Like if you really like that ride, a limited edition. And then there is coins as well. You do have some more roller coaster style t-shirts. So you got Apollo's chariot, a different Apollo's chariot. Lots of stuff for Apollo's chariot. That's a pesto one's not bad. Yeah, not, not bad coaster stuff here. Can't come to Bush Gardens without visiting the Clydesdales. And here is Axel who's having himself a snack. Gonna do something Molly you've never done before. I've never done it. The Rhine River Cruise. And I'm very thankful they have the opening times on the sign. Because, because if we walked down there and it was not open, oh, it would not be a half to No. Even with this wonderful beer. I, I don't know when this, this sign was made, but uh, at the time they made the sign, the ride has given over 15 million rides. Making our way down towards the Rhine River Cruise. Um, it's worth coming down here because you do get some great shots of the roller coasters. I will say, normally the Cobra Roll, not my favorite element, but the one on Alpen Guys, it's really pretty solid. It is also worth coming down to the Rhine River. You see some of the wildlife here, like all of these turtles. He's so cute. Oh my gosh, it's not a turtle. Oh, look you know, I'm not sure I've ever seen one of these in the wildlife. I believe that guy's an alligator snapping turtle. And uh, that is something I've only seen in zoos. These guys live for, I think, 100 years or so. And uh, they, they get pretty ferocious. Currently in line for the Rhine River Cruise, which uh, I definitely enjoy because you can take your beer on the boat tour. And away we go. On the boat tour, you go outside of what you would think the, the grounds of the park are. You just get a cool view of, of nature here in Virginia. Yeah. Definitely never done this before, and it's very peaceful. There's turtles on that tree. It's a good way uh, to get out of the park, too, like your crowds. And Although I will say, like, it's a cool day today. If this was 95 degrees, I'm not sure how, how much fun this, this, this attraction peaceful. would be. Yeah. The river tour does take you over towards Apollo's Chariot as well. That was wonderfully relaxing. Won't, now, won't be? The worst part. Yes. The giant hill of death. Now, as you might have noticed, we've been doing nothing but rides here at Bush Gardens today. And that's because we're going to be here again tomorrow. And tomorrow, the forecast, it does not look good. Uh, lots of rain, possibly thunderstorms. So. We're gonna do more of the, the shops and the shows and probably a little bit more of the beer tomorrow. But today, today it's mostly rides. You know, I had no idea this thing actually moved. As the bell just told, five o'clock. Just walked on to Alpen, guys. Also, the couple weeks where we're here, there's like a two week span in May, where they're celebrating all the coasters having an anniversary with some signage on the rides. And then there's the statue that Molly really enjoys. Oh, I love that statue. It's the best one. Here's the gift shop by Griffin, Griffin Gifts. And I've been in here. I found one t-shirt I want to buy. And now, Molly, it's up to you. How well do you know your boyfriend? Which t-shirt do I want to buy? Uh, is it on the pride line of merchandise over here? Am I going to be supportive of my friends? I didn't do one of these. I'd say that one off the top of my bat. Uh, back. All right, she's oh, going with that one. Let's uh, spin. Oh, here we go. I just... Griffin t-shirt. I'm gonna still go with my gut, my gut instinct. Well, that's why we've been dating for 11 years. Molly is correct. <laughs> the old country Bush Gardens logo, um, kind of faded. A little that's cost a... of thirty-five dollars. There you. Oh yeah. I doesn't, it goes without saying that Busch Gardens Williamsburg here is a, just a beautiful, beautiful theme park. Oh, he goes there. Here is the wolves. Now, the wolves only come out at certain times of the yeah, day. You'll see him, like, if you come over to this side of the park, there's an A-frame with when they will be out. Um, they know I have food. There, it's basically... 
Molly, we've been on a lot of good roller coasters today. And now it's time to go on one that's, you know, a classic, vintage. It's got a great logo. I'm sure, I'm sure it is. Deer, look at the deer. Oh yeah, there is a deer. Two. Aw, that just made it better. <laughs> There's three. There's one right there. There's four. Oh no, back to the right. <laughs> Molly, what were your thoughts here on the Loch Ness Monster? There were deer and that was the best part. Uh, for me, the only good part, um, this ride is in really rough shape. And it's, it's a classic, but uh, if RMC ever started to want to start redoing like old busted metal coasters, this would be a good one to start on. That would break Zach's heart. That's fine. The, the ride almost broke my neck. <laughs> Keep the interlocking loops, do the rest over. And uh, fix up the tunnel. Molly, this is some top notch theme park directional signage. It is. It might be the best one in the park. This is another must visit for me when coming to Bush Gardens Escape from Pompeii, which is um, an indoor dark ride that turns into a shoot to shoot splashdown ride. Which is shocking because you hate. Uh, yes, I hate the idea of possibly getting wet. But you love this ride. Yeah, I mean, it's very much on that Disney Universal level. Not something the, the Bush Gardens brand is doing currently, but something they did at a time. And here comes the splash. You can see the splashdown. It's, it's not. It's not too big. And I'll sit in the back row. We'll see how this goes. I might be cranky. Okay, only one got me. Oh, my pants! My pants! Oh no! Oh no, look at my pants! We warned you! I have a butt. My pants are uh, dry. Nope. I mean, like, Lousy water cannons. One thing we forgot to factor was the water cannons. I did good. I did. It looks like I peed my pants. Yeah, you did not come out real well. So no, you have uh, my shirt pretty dry. Grumpiness over here. Look at this, but, that, uh, this is not a good look for me, Molly. <laughs> Let's go dry off. We've got about 53 more minutes before the park closes on up. So I think it's time for a second round on Pantheon. Not too busy over here, according to the shockingly specific wait time sign, a 21 minute wait. A lot of people have complained about the lack of theming in Pantheon and the queue and the station. But one good thing, if you look over here, you can see the Scottish Highland cattle. These guys are the fuzzy cows and they are, they're so cool. Uh, after the second round, I think I like it even better. Now the the very exact wait time, 13 minutes. This is something I've never seen at the parks before. This man's job is to, it's the almost park close, so he's fishing out the robot boats and putting them in there. Never seen that. No, there's robot boats here at uh, Escape from Pompeii. Park just closed up, so we're gonna check out the, uh, the main gift shop here on the way out. Pretty solid shirt for the Alpengeist roller coaster. A lot of people are really into the nano coasters and the coaster cutouts, and they have a lot here from both rides that are currently at the park 
And then rides that are no longer at the park, like Drakenfire and Big Bad Wolf. Molly, this is the one of the more unique items I've seen. They are selling a limited edition Pantheon hard hat. Yeah, that's odd. That's usually not sold. No. We were at Busch Gardens in Tampa a week or two ago. They did have a line of merchandise done in this kind of funky, colorful style of very similar products, like the big tray and stuff like that. We do have a line of coffee mugs and shot glasses and a t-shirt for the roller coasters celebrating their anniversary years. And that was a great day here at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Yeah, at first I thought it was going to be very crowded, but we got on a lot of rides, barely any wait. Yeah, um, the security backs up big time in the morning, so don't let that throw you off that it's going to be a terribly crowded we, day. We heard that it, they don't open up until exactly at that moment that the park opens, so everyone gets here early and it backs up. Yep, um, there we go. Day two I feel like could, have, could be pretty different. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how things go tomorrow. Good morning, we made it to day two. Uh, no line for security today, that was very nice. We are also here- uh, Before opening. Yeah, 20 minutes before opening. Um, looks like weather's gonna be good till about noon, so we might have like two hours of rides, and then thing, things could- Choose. Then things, things could hit the fan a little bit, but- We'll see, we'll see. Molly, it has been quite some time before I went to a park at Rope Drop. Yes, it's been a very long time. And I'm sure uh, us, like most of the crowd here, is going to be going to Pantheon. And the park is open. Uh, nobody running, which is kind of nice. Molly, that was a good day to start. Way to start the morning. Yeah. Front row on Pantheon. I think I like it better in the front row. It's some really cool visuals. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this this ride, it's pretty fantastic. Also, the overly accurate wait time sign right now, 19 minutes. If you are going to Busch Gardens, just be aware they have staggered opening times. So like the back corner of the park, we were trying to get to Revolton. It's now 10.34. That corner of the park opens at 10.45. Just hit 11 a.m. Uh, the rain came a little bit earlier than they, they were predicting. Uh, we're going to hop on Revolton when it calms down. So I believe every ride at Busch Gardens, while you're waiting in line, they kind of play this song, which we've deemed to be the, the happy line music. Anything. This is really good to see. They are running both stations on for Bolton. So that really, really helps capacity on this ride. Just rolled Bro Bolton about three times in a row. In about 14 minutes. Yeah, walk on rides. A really fun ride. We went on uh, once yesterday and twice this morning. We're like, do they only run one show scene anymore in the big event building? We only got the lightning storm. Yeah, so we had to like, okay, let's go on that third ride in a row. And no, there is uh, some different shows in there. There's, we got the uh, the Lady of the Forest the last time. Well, I think I found my second t-shirt that's coming home with me. They got one for Questor. I used to love Questor, both in Tampa and, and Williamsburg. So unfortunately, while it's not raining at the moment, there is lightning in the area. So all outdoor food stuff and uh, rides are closed. So we're gonna check out some of the shops starting here in Germany where there's wine tasting. Actually, the wine tasting, pretty decent deal. Four samples and a souvenir glass, 17 bucks. If That's I have a place to put a souvenir glass, I might do, but I don't. I like these, Molly. These these are pretty adorable wine holders. Uh, they don't really fit for the majority of the kitchen. And we don't really drink wine. That one bottle of wine we got for free on that cruise ship is probably gonna be there for forever. No, I might drink it when you're gone. Maybe I'll be in, I'll be in Cedar Point next week without yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Have my lonely glass of wine. Bottle. Bottle. You could buy uh, very traditional German stuff like cuckoo clocks. We have those when I was kid. Uh, my mom has one as well. Yeah. And I love the different beer styles. That's way. Yeah. Uh, but they get very expensive. Like, look at this one. 
$299. But I think my favorite is- Look at the gator. The gator playing golf. I like the uh, the wild boar wearing lederhosen. Yeah, that's very true. He, he would be my favorite, I believe. Could get a pretty nice Bush Gardens beer drinking mug with all of the different countries on there. If you were looking for something to haunt your nightmares for your children, you could buy them some of these terrifying German plushies. They have to be from like a TV show or something. Look at this, is that a mouth? Yep. In the mouth of the stomach? Uh, uh, some, these two are very soft though and terrifying. Really nice uh, Bush Gardens kind of travel backpack. Yeah. Looks like a hiking. Yeah. Day two update. Unfortunately, Far Castle Spirits not up right now. Bright and sunny for now. Uh, ride still closed for the moment, but we want to head into the Fest House to take in a showing of the October Zest show. Maybe more beer. And probably more beer. Inside the Fest House, it is a beautiful, beautiful, gigantic venue. You've got all the quick service food over there. Long lines right now. Yeah, which makes sense with everything else closed. There is some beer inside the, uh, the quick service food area. But then there's also the Brow House Craft Beer Room, which I'm really hoping is open. We have not been over here yet. And Yay. it is open. This is one of the best craft beer bars at any uh, theme park, really. And here is that, all the drafts, uh, so many different types of beer. A couple of, yep. couple of German beers, a lot of local beers, some just great beers. And I went with a legend lager. You can see the, uh, they had the classic untapped menu. So if you review a beer, you might be able to pop up on there. And uh, it's all organized by a type of beer. In the quick service food area, they do have some different drafts. You do have more traditional stuff over here, your Bud Light, your Coors Light, but you do have some German stuff as well. Some German stuff I really like, like the Franz Conor Hefeweizen. Something I believe every Busch Gardens and SeaWorld Park is doing this year. Which is really cool. Yeah, pass member exclusive cups with rides or animals on it. And they're releasing one a month. So here's the ones for Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Uh, really cool kind of art style. There you go, there's, there's a couple available right now. I think we've seen most of them around the park. Like right, the Big Bad Wolf, Apollo's uh, Chariot. The Scoot is the one this month. Everyone's talking about the Big Bad Wolf. And you never will, Molly. You never, no, will. never will. I've been on it. It was a wonderful ride at the time. I'm sure. I didn't buy it. I believe it's for sale over here. <laughs> yep, they have a Big Bad Wolf shirt for sale over there. Also, the old Eagle logo. That's, that's nice. Well, it's looking really bright over there, but it is uh, raining quite a bit over here. We have beer, though. Oh, gosh. Yeah, the, the beer helps. And we also almost got ran over. Yeah. <laughs> Keyword being almost. You know, it would be really nice if Bush Gardens had some indoor rides. Maybe like right there. Maybe. Maybe like a world class dark ride. Oh, world class, huh? That, that, was, a lot of... that was a world class dark ride. Uh, yes, yes. I thought you meant what might be coming. No, but still, it would have been open. Yes. So, as we try to make our way through the rain from. Uh, the Oktoberfest show over towards Celtic Fire in Ireland. The lighthouse here in Jamaica, it's a functioning lighthouse. Like, it went down. Yeah. The rain's starting to let up a little bit as we walk through fake Germany. Wanna, I wanna mention that we're going on our biggest trip ever in about a month. We're going to Europe, real Europe, not Busch Gardens Europe. No. And uh, we'll be in Germany, Sweden, Italy, and Austria. It's our biggest trip ever. We are super excited, so stay tuned for that next month sometime. Got a couple different signs here for various Bush Gardens like things. For new friends. Yes. 
or Canada. If you were a fan of the old Battle for Air attraction, uh, they do have some of the merchandise here for 70% off. Now this ran probably for its final time ever pre-pandemic. But uh, I don't even know what some of this is. So the rain let up enough that we made it to the Abbey Stone Theater here in the Ireland section of the park for uh, one of my favorite stage shows at a theme park in the entire country. It's a really good show. Yeah, uh, Celtic Fire. It's an Irish step dancing and singing show. And we got moved to the stage. Yes. So there were uh, people like step dancing right on this platform, right in front of us. Usually it costs, I think? I think it's $8, it's not $8. very much. Okay. I had enough time also to go to the pub, grab myself a Guinness to uh, stay in theme with the show. Yeah. Uh, really good. I I've been to see, I've seen a lot of the stage shows at most theme parks in the country. I think this is number three for me out of every stage show in the country. You know, it, it lacks, you know, Mickey fighting a dragon or uh, a seaplane crashing through a stage, but it is so good. And it's one of the thing, best things here at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. So here in the Ireland section of the park, they were supposed to have music a couple of times a day, but you know, it's been raining, it's been lightninging. So they moved him to the pub, in my opinion, an even better location. I'm gonna turn it back on because I had no idea there were four musicians performing here in the pub. So this might this might require another beer to be drank and relax and enjoy the music. The bandit here, they are a lot of fun as well. They're like, does anyone know who Celine Dion is? Great, this is not one of her songs. We're gonna do the other song from Titanic right before they drowned. They do have some nice merchandise here in the Irish gift shop. I love the the painting of the Scottish Highland cattle. I like the cow. I think it's a sheep and then a chicken. Yeah. And lots of your traditional kind of Guinness. Uh, that is a very nice sign. And I do like the, the, the retro kind of Guinness logo. Like anything with the Guinness toucan on it, I'm on board with. Look at those. Those are wonderful. Found some cool retro pins here in the Scotland store. You've got Corkscrew Hill, the Enchanted Laboratory, a show I saw, I believe, on my first ever visit here a long time ago. I have no idea what that is. No, pet shenanigans. And uh, one of the more hated attractions, I believe, ever in this theme park, Europe in the Air. That one I know. Yep. What do we Something I have not seen in a very long time is the show in the Italy area. It is very uncrowded today between the rain and just being on a weekday here on a Friday. Uh, Busch Gardens not very crowded. We just walked on front row Apollo's Chariot. But our time at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, it is, uh, it's, it's coming towards an end. It is. We wanted to grab a last ride on Pantheon, but Pantheon was down. But still, like in the two days, we got four rides with very minimal weights. A front row ride too. Yeah. Now, uh, Molly, I'm gonna leave you and the camera here in Italy. You're gonna do some wine tasting. My, my nerdy behind is gonna hoof it over to Germany to buy a Quest Door t-shirt. Because I'm a huge dork. We do get a gift discount, so my tasting was about $15.08. And you gotta choose four drinks out of these six. There's four bites and two red wines. Overall, I think I like the Stella the best, followed by the Brute. During our visit, the Food and Wine Festival is going on here at Bush Gardens, and we're going to start that off here at Brazil. A very colorful food. Yes, I think we're going to go with the grilled beef. And we made it to our first food sample. We went to steak with chimichurri sauce, and uh, we got a lot. We got the 15 sampler, which I had no discount on it, and ended up being around $84 after tax. Pretty solid first item. The steak is, is decent, but the chimichurri sauce is very, very tasty. We're gonna have to venture into this Canadian store for a premium rum tasting. 
so the rum tasting you get a souvenir glass and three samples for $25 so I think we'll pass the next food and wine booth up next is Jamaica and I like how they have like informational kiosks like look at this adorable Jamaican animal that's adorable but uh, we're gonna get a Jamaican beef patty and a beer We grabbed a tangerine wheat ale made by a local brewery called Airworks. Not like Jamaican beers over here, but they're very tropical kind of flavored beers. And then we got the Jamaican beef patties. It's got a coconut, a coconut sauce. Molly, give it a whirl. It is a very small sample. Yeah. To our last one. I like the sauce. Yeah, coconut sauce sounds very different. Mm -hmm. Italy is the next stop on the food and wine tour. I love the booth. The booth over here is very pretty. I think we might go with the Alfredo pasta. I will say the uh, sampler cart's not a great value. Like ours, we got like, when you divide it up, it was like everything cost about $5.25. And uh, most of this is under that. <laughs> the Alfredo looks pretty good. It's got a big pot, some cheese, multiple types of cheese on top. All right. Thank you. Japan is the next booth up. And I really gotta give Bush Gardens credit. These food booths are really, really well themed. Let's see, what do we got over here? We got an Impossible Bao, spicy tuna sushi, uh, yoza, uh, ice cream, and sake. We went a bit weird for this next one, the Impossible Bao, which has the fake meat, the Impossible. I don't know. So, uh, not very weird, actually pretty good. I would have no idea that it's not meat. Also, the bun's amazing. Yeah. Normal. This corner of Bush Garden's kind of in rough shape. Roman Rapids, I guess, hasn't opened yet for the season. Uh, this restaurant is closed. I'm not sure. I think this used to be like, I think this used to be a Coca-Cola stand or arcade or something. That just looks horrible. But over here is our next food booth, and we're going to Australia. Yep. So we doubled up in this booth. We got the banger sausage with onions. That looks really good. Guess which one costs more? Yeah, this lamb chop, they charge $10.50 for. And this is like $6, I think. It's so tiny. So this is tiny, but absolutely delicious. I think it's the same sauce that they had with uh, Brazil. Yeah. The exact same sauce. And the, the, the sausage sandwich, really good too. I love the onions. In Scotland, there's a Virginia booth and a really nice beer selection here. It was tough to make the call, but I went with the Blueberry Key Lime Creamsicle Ale. It is fantastic. Stopping here in France at the French Quarter booth for what I believe is gonna be our final food item on day one, the Banana Foster Cheesecake. Ooh, with a rum caramel sauce. Also, New Belgium's uh, Booty Ranger Juicy Hazy IPA. Delicious, as is their Purple Haze. The Banana Foster Cheesecake looks fantastic. It does, it looks really yummy. Very, very tasty. Um, there is a rum caramel sauce on top. Tastes very strongly of rum. Not much of caramel. Which is fine in our book. Back for more food and wine fun on day two. Uh, there's one more food item we wanted to try here in Jamaica and a new drink. We got the jerk chicken slider. From Jamaica, Oops. yeah, of course. And the tropical hard cider, which is really nice. Yeah, that's really good for Blake's. Yeah. Grabbing a carne asada taco here in the Mexico Pavilion, and they are uh, they heating up the tortilla for us, which is really nice. Taco looks pretty legit. You got guacamole. I think that's cojita cheese and carne asada. You can squeeze a lime on top. Uh, good news, the margarita stand has a pretty good beer selection. Drinking an El Guapo Agave IPA. And uh, kind of hiding out for the rain here. The Lorikeet Aviary is closed right now based on the avian flu going around, which makes sense. You, you really should not have people close to the animals when uh, that kind of thing. It's not, it's not the right thing for the animals. We not, might not make it to Ireland before the show. No, I mean, there, there's a good thing there's a bunch of shows of Celtic Fire today. Oh, that's a lot of rain. It's weird because there's a lot of rain here, but it looks so bright over there. Well, at least, at least I got beer. That helps. Oh, nope, that's rain. <laughs> rain in the beer. 
The next food booth is Hawaii. And we got the Hawaiian mac and cheese, which is mac and cheese with ham and pineapple mm -hmm. and a macadamia nut crust and a New Realms tropical wheat beer. The next book is Greece, which is here in Ireland. We actually went for two items. The lamb burger slider and then a fried cheese balls with tzatziki sauce. Apparently three cheeses. We'll see. We made it back to the Virginia booth and we got a couple of things. Uh, these are bacon and cheese hush puppies. And then I got a full pour of apple pie moonshine. No one knows what brand of moonshine is. Also, there's no way this is like Sugar Lands or Old Smoky because a glass this full would just destroy you. So I'm guessing it's like moonshine mixed with cider. Also during the Food and Wine Festival, they have a bunch of live music all around the park. And uh, that's, that's really great, like hanging out, relaxing, drinking your beer, listening to music. Some roller coasters in the background. The final booth for food and wine is South Korea, located right here by the teacups. And they had two things we wanted to try. We got the pork rib, which looks wonderful. And I asked what was better, the chicken or the beef, and he told me the beef. And that will do it for our time here at Bush Gardens, Williamsburg. I got a wine glass with my face here. Yeah, that was, that was a really nice experience they do. And you could do like multiple tastings. There's some in Germany, France, and Italy. Uh, I love this park. It is probably a top 10 park for me in the country. It's very pretty. Great selection of rides, great selection of food, great selection of drinks. Um, you know, one very, very good show. And I, I just absolutely recommend this park if you're thinking about it. And especially with Pantheon, now they have kind of a marquee coaster that I feel like they did not have before. Like as far as a coaster guy goes, like now you can see like people, a lot of people probably put Pantheon in their top 10. It might be in mine. I'm not sh quite sure yet, but it is a, a world-class coaster. I do have to say after riding Repulta and Pantheon, they're very close to me, hmm. like for the best ride in the park. Yeah. Uh, Pantheon, probably the better coaster. I'll give it you. I'll give yeah. you that. And uh, overall, it's a, a wonderful trip. Uh, Molly, we went to, during the food and wine festival time. You know, I don't think there's a, t if you have an annual pass, I'm not sure there's a lot of value in that lanyard. No, no. So I'm not sure if I would do that again, unless they up the prices. Mm -hmm. And I would kind of study the value process, but uh, it's definitely fun coming during that time. The pasta, the hush puppies. Oh, I can't even think. For me, uh, the, the key lime blueberry creamsicle beer in Virginia. Oh, that was so good. And the... Uh, in Greece, the uh, fried cheese. Yep. Was good. And it, it makes it kind of fun eating your way around the park. Then you're not having like one or two big meals. And I uh, kind of enjoy that. Mm -hmm. All right, that'll do it for our time here at Bush Gardens in Williamsburg. We are off to go uh, hit, hit some of the local watering holes this evening. Uh, before I'm making that. Yeah, shocker there. All right, if you have any questions about Bush Gardens Williamsburg, let me know in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.